So our next speaker is um, uh, Nicole Fabri. Uh, Nicole is from European Laboratory for Nonlinear Spectroscopy, Italy. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. Uh, and she's going to talk about optimal control of a diamond spin qubit sensor. Thank you, Andrea. I'll try now to... Yeah, please share my your screen. screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you see my screen uh, in uh, full mode? Yeah, that, that okay. Guide nicely. Thank you. Please. Okay. Answer. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm really very happy to to have opportunity to contribute to this uh, very interesting meeting. And I hope, uh, of course, that uh, we'll we will meet each other in person soon. Sorry to interrupt, Nicole. I don't see your video. I don't see your camera on but um, okay it, I can. Yeah, now it is yeah excellent Does it works yes thank it you. works now thank you so uh, this talk uh, will focus on uh, doing quantum sensing uh, with spins in diamond and uh, specifically um, how to optimize quantum sensing with uh, uh, optimal control tools uh, indeed, my, the, the main goal of my group at Lens in Florence is uh, uh, developing uh, control, quantum control to improve in these quantum sensor, mainly for biological application. The physical problem can be stated uh, very simply in this way. Uh, we have a quantum system uh, that is uh, by nature very... Uh, sensitive to external perturbations uh, and uh, we want to use it to precisely measure uh, a, a given signal, external signal. For example, this is uh, uh, on the left is the spectrum of uh, some uh, uh, ensemble of microtubules that are uh, cytoskeletal uh, polymers uh, that are... There's a, there's a background noise if you can mute. Okay. Uh, as I was, I, I was saying, uh, this is, uh, for example, important for, for biological processes, this uh, a polymer. But uh, as you can see, the spectrum shows uh, a, uh, a large uh, number of peaks that uh, uh, span in the range uh, between 15 kilohertz to, uh, 20, uh, to 250 uh, megahertz. So this is an exemplary uh, situation for, uh, that we want to uh, tackle. And uh, uh, the problem is that the natural sensitivity of quantum states also makes uh, them very uh, prone to uh, detrimental noise sources that uh, uh, induce the coherence of the, the quantum sensor then uh, they, this limits the available time, the available integration time, and then limits the, the sensitivity. And therefore, in most of the practical cases, indeed, the, the uh, sensitivity of the sensor, uh, of the quantum sensor is uh, far away from uh, theoretical limits. Uh, in particular, um, as I will show you, we focus on uh, uh, sensor based on diamond color uh, sensors in diamond uh, and the particular nitrogen vacancy color sensors in diamond that have uh, emerged in the last uh, few years uh, as a, a prominent platform for quantum sensing. They have been used uh, for different applications uh, ranging from the uh, characterization of nanomatter magnetism uh, to the um, measurement of electron flux uh, in graphene. They have been used to for spectroscopy of single molecules uh, with applications uh, in the in chemical analysis and uh, uh, quantum computing. And also they have been used uh, for non-invasive measurements uh, in biological uh, samples, thanks to their uh, natural uh, biocompatibility. But uh, with the broadening of this application, 
uh, of the range of applications uh, um, of diamond-based uh, sensor. Also the, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, uh, in, also the, the demand for performance increases. And so the idea here is to use uh, optimal quantum control tools. Optimal quantum control tools have uh, been actually introduced in different contexts. Uh, let's say in, uh, for example, in many body physics. Uh, in general, the, the problem is, uh, can be stated like this. We want to uh, optimize uh, the temporal dependence of some control parameter in our system to uh, obtain uh, a, a more efficient process uh, that can be very, uh, that can have a very diverse uh, uh, purpose, for example, uh, optimize the preparation of, its, of a state, minimize the energy of the system, and so on. This kind of methods uh, have been uh, widely used, successfully applied in a variety of uh, fields, uh, ranging from uh, uncorrelated system, for example, to control uh, chemical reactions, and also uh, in, uh, to, to drive uh, uh, the dynamics of uh, many body uh, correlated systems, uh, for example, uh, across a quantum phase transition, and also for the uh, fast driving of single qubits. Okay, so in, uh, in the following, I will uh, uh, show you, uh, let's say, how to um, adapt optimal quantum control tools to uh, quantum sensing, mm -hmm. and specifically in the case of the spin qubit uh, sensor. And then in the second part of the talk, uh, I will uh, tell you about uh, a, a method uh, we have uh, introduced to uh, optimize the sensor sensitivity uh, by mapping the, the, the problem of the, of the sensor to a, of a single qubit sensor, dynamically controlled qubit, single qubit sensor in a, to a, a easing model. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, spend uh, a few words to uh, introduce the physical platform and the uh, main, uh, let's say, the basic uh, techniques. Uh, as uh, you probably know, the nitrogen vacancy uh, centers in diamond are uh, quantum defects based on uh, a nitrogen substitutional atoms uh, next to a vacancy. And uh, uh, here the electron uh, uh, wave function is localized and forms uh, a spin triplet, so a three level system. Uh, but uh, very often uh, this is used uh, as a two-level system by selecting two spin states, uh, and so we have a, a, a spin qubit, basically. The special property of this kind of system is uh, for sure that it, it has exhibits a very long coherence. Uh, it is a, a long-lived uh, spin qubit and also it is optically active. We use the room temperature uh, diamond device. Here is the uh, diamond sample few millimeter uh, large, uh, compatible with the biological applications. And scanning the laser uh, a, across the, the sample, we can see, we can see the single uh, qubits by collecting the fluorescence. And uh, the, by sending a microwave, through to an antenna wire, uh, we can uh, rotate the spin uh, in a very, very fast wave. Way. So, uh, for example, you can see here uh, a nice uh, radio oscillation in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in one of the pioneering work in the field where uh, the you see that the control of the spin occurs uh, uh, with pulse, microwave pulses uh, of tens of uh, nanoseconds. So you can perform many, many uh, turn to the three or more uh, operation, quantum operation uh, before losing the, co the coherence. Well, 
Okay. Uh, so uh, the um, nice factor is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, that uh, and the sensors have, have uh, very long coherence because they are a uh, very clean uh, system. Uh, but um, uh, the, actually, around the MV center, there are also other, uh, other kind of impurities. And in particular, in natural diamond uh, with the, uh, let's say, uh, natural con concentration of carbon 13, uh, that is around 1%, this is the main, uh, the main uh, uh, let's say, uh, in inherent, uh, the, the inner noise source in the diamond. Uh, because of the, the carbon 13 that has, that is, has been half uh, is not controlled externally. So these uh, nuclear spins uh, um, uh, flip flop and create uh, a, a time varying magnetic field, a random magnetic field that uh, induce uh, uh, um, some uh, random pickup uh, uh, of the phase of the electron spin of the MV center, and so induce the MV center to uh, the, the phase. Uh, to to uh, to to uh, mitigate this effect, uh, we can use uh, uh, dynamical decoupling protocols that are basically uh, um, extension of uh, spin echo. Uh, so the electron is uh, repeatedly um, uh, flipped, uh, and uh, um, if the um, noise, uh, uh, the time variation of the noise is low enough, and the flip of the like the spin is flipped uh, very fast uh, compared to that, then the interaction between the, the spin and the uh, the environment. Uh, is uh, averaged out. And uh, if you use, for example, uh, uh, a, a periodic uh, train of pulses, uh, the coherence can be, uh, or the spin can be uh, increased by orders of magnitudes. Okay, this kind of uh, dynamical decoupling techniques uh, can be used uh, not only to improve coherence, but also for sensing. Indeed, uh, uh, in, a, in a simple picture, if you have a Ramsey interferometer, this uh, will be sensitive uh, uh, basically to DC signals, static signals, while uh, a, a, an alternating signal like this is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, an alternating signal is ever out. Vice versa, with uh, uh, dynamical decoupling uh, uh, protocols, if the, uh, the period of the external signal to be measured uh, matches the, 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 the periodic flipping of the spin, uh, the, um, the, the spin, uh, 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 let's say the signal is rectified so that the spin is sensitive to that signal. This is uh, uh, a, 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 this periodic, uh, periodic sequence is the so-called par parcel sequence and uh, made of uh, epidistant pulses. And this is uh, sensitive to one single uh, frequency of the environment. Uh, to, to, uh, to analyze more precisely the, this, uh, this uh, situation, we can use the filter function approach. Basically, uh, again, you have your target signal, B of T, that we uh, write uh, in this way, and we have a noise source. Uh, the important quantities uh, to be uh, taken into account are the, uh, let's say, the phase that is accumulated during the interrogation time, during the, the protocol of that occurs, and uh, the uh, coherence the chi of t, that is the, co the coherence functional. So in the presence of uh, a dynamical decoupling protocol, basically uh, the, the effect of this uh, uh, period periodic or uh, non-periodic flipping can be uh, described by means of a modulation function 
uh, y uh, of t um, that is uh, that assumes uh, values plus one or minus one and the phase acquired by the spin uh, during the, the interrogation time basically depends on the uh, amplitude of the temporal dependence of the uh, of the external field to be measured and uh, convoluted with this modulation function uh, the, the coherence chi of t of the spin depends uh, instead on the uh, spectral uh, uh, density function of the noise and uh, this y uh, capital y is the filter function that is uh, uh, the Fourier transform of the modulation function well uh, this is for example this is a, a, an example of a, a noise uh, uh, spectrum for the this being cubic in diamond given by the uh, um, carbon spin buff I was uh, describing you before. Well, uh, okay, so um, various uh, uh, periodic or non-periodic sequences have been used, for example, uh, for, for sensing. Here uh, in the, in the, on the top, you have uh, a periodic sequence, a carbon cell sequence that uh, is, uh, has been used to um, uh, detect a single nuclei uh, around in this center, while a non-periodic sequence, uh, uh, so-called heuristic sequence, um, has been used for uh, um, identify uh, the dimers of carbon-13 inside the diamond, very, very near uh, to the end center. Well, the, what we want uh, now, the, the question we want to uh, address now is uh, finding a way to, um, let's say, uh, uh, to get the optimal sequence for any uh, in, uh, external signal of interest. So we want to, uh, as I said at the beginning, we want to uh, exploit uh, uh, quantum optimal control tools. And uh, uh, the quant to use quantum optimal control tools, uh, uh, we have to recast a bit uh, the, uh, the, the, let's say, the, the classical uh, uh, statement of, of, of quantum optimal control. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, in general, uh, quantum optimal control has been used to prepare a defined state. So if the goal of the preparation of a, a Non well defined quantum state uh, psi, psi g, uh, then you can use uh, as cost function of your optimization the infidelity. So you want to minimize, uh, minimize this quantity. Uh, if you want, to, for example, uh, um, find uh, uh, the an unknown target prepare an unknown target state an unknown uh, sorry ground state of an Hamiltonian then uh, you will minimize uh, the energy uh, of the final state you may want to prepare uh, entangled states then uh, you uh, you can use the um, uh, entanglement entropy as cost function the sensing task is uh, a, a bit complex uh, because uh, we have no access to unitary dynamics because we have this uh, unknown signal to be measured. Um, the environment uh, introduces a non-unitary uh, dynamics. And then uh, let's say, the, the, and, and we want to find a compromise between noise refocusing and external field sensing. That can be a very uh, conflicting task because uh, the uh, spectrum of noise and signal can super be superimposed. So uh, to, to, uh, to adapt uh, uh, optimal quantum control of sensing, then we can uh, use uh, the Fisher information and the sensitivity. So the Fisher information, uh, of, as you know, is used to assess the quality of a parameter estimation given a, a certain uh, control protocol and within certain uh, experimental constraint. 
Um, here, the P of N is the probability uh, associated to uh, measuring the outcome, an outcome C when uh, your external uh, field, your external, uh, let, let's say the quantity to be measured is B. Um, here, uh, uh, E of X is basically the estimator of the, uh, of the, the quantity and, uh, and rho is uh, the density matrix. So the feature information assesses the, the quality of uh, your parameter estimation. Very related to the feature information is the sensitivity. That is uh, uh, the minimum uh, field that you can measure. Uh, that is very simply related to the feature information indeed, and can be rewritten in terms of the, uh, the coherence function and the phase acquired uh, to the uh, sensor during the interrogation time that uh, I was introducing before. Well, so the sensitivity will be our cost function for the optimization. And uh, uh, thus we have de uh, uh, designed a, a direct uh, um, method for a, a direct uh, uh, algorithm uh, that uh, looks for the optimal solution in terms of optimal temporal distribution of uh, uh, pi pulses that control uh, our spin. And the, 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 the algorithm, um, uh, optimizes uh, the sensitivity in bit. At first, we have employed a neural need algorithm and we have investigated very, uh, various uh, uh, multidimensional uh, sets of uh, parameters uh, up to uh, dimension uh, uh, 51. And we have optimized, we have analyzed the optimization parameters that uh, gives us, uh, give us uh, the um, best uh, improvement uh, um, without uh, requiring the excessive uh, um, computational resources. Well, the, um, uh, when, uh, let's say, uh, the algorithm gives you the optimal solution, and uh, this is uh, uh, employed in experiment. Uh, here, uh, some results. We have analyzed uh, the cases of uh, uh, a multi-chromatic signal, in particular a three-chromatic signal, and uh, a Gaussian train of impulses. And we have compared uh, standard uh, carpool cell CDP uh, uh, protocols in green with uh, the optimal control uh, protocols in, in blue. Uh, we have, uh, in, in practice, we have fixed the uh, number of pulses and uh, um, uh, changed the, the uh, optimized the, the temporal distribution as a free parameter. Uh, in both uh, the analyzed cases, uh, optimal control shows an improvement uh, compared to uh, car per cell. In particular, uh, you, uh, to evaluate this improvement, uh, here we have uh, uh, represented the phase acquired and the, the invert on the center of the slide and the uh, inverse of sensitivity uh, on the right. Uh, being the inverse of sensitivity here, the larger is the better. Uh, for example, uh, in a trichromatic case, uh, for, for a trichromatic target signal, we see that uh, uh, CP sequences shows, uh, um, in, uh, let's say, the phase acquired by the sensor with the CP sequence uh, shows uh, three peaks that correspond to the three different uh, components of the signal, while uh, the inverse of sensitivity shows that one of these uh, um, uh, um, frequency component is suppressed because uh, it is uh, uh, superimposed with some uh, noise or, or component or uh, harmonics of the noise component. Uh, optimal control uh, uh, brings an improvement of the uh, phase acquired in, a, a, in the whole range of uh, times uh, in this interrogation times investigated. On, on the top, you see the phase, uh, and on the bottom, you see the absolute value of this phase. 
Also, when the, uh, let's say, the optimal control uh, shows the same uh, value of, uh, of a fee uh, as for the CP, uh, actually the sensitivity is, shows an improvement. And this is, uh, a, 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 this uh, um, shows that uh, the optimal control not only uh, improves the phase acquired, but also the um, uh, protection against noise. And also we see that, uh, uh, for example, here, you see that uh, uh, we have also a sensing speed up um, if, if we fix the sensitivity, let's say, uh, this is reached in a shorter time with optimal control uh, compared to uh, standard CP sequences. And these can be used if you have, uh, for example, uh, signals that have um, uh, inherent, uh, uh, short, uh, inherently short uh, uh, coherence time, or uh, if you have this experimental drift that uh, um, prevent you to make uh, long measurements. Okay, um, well, this is, uh, uh, let's say, these, these uh, methods have show, has shown us uh, a good uh, improvement compared to standard methods, uh, but uh, the computational complexity uh, makes, uh, uh, let's say, may limit uh, the um, application. Uh, the applicability of the method. So we have, uh, in the second part of the talk, uh, I will show you um, uh, in, another method, a new method that uh, uh, instead draws uh, uh, from an analogy uh, between pulsed uh, dynamical control of single spin uh, qubit sensors and uh, easing uh, spin glass models. Okay, so uh, the idea is uh, to map indeed our problem, that is find a continuous temporal dynamics that optimizes sensitivity into another problem, to problem that is find the uh, discrete uh, spatial distribution of spins that minimizes the energy of uh, an easing, uh, in an easing uh, system. Uh, so basically we uh, discrete uh, discretize our uh, time, the interrogation time of the sensor into uh, little uh, tiny intervals, and we map it in uh, spatial steps. So, um, indeed, uh, we sh uh, I, I will show you in a moment that uh, we find that the problem of uh, this optimization problem, uh, let's say the, the optimization problem of the sensor is uh, uh, indeed homologous uh, to the uh, optimization problem of the, the easing spin model. And uh, the advantage of this uh, mapping is that uh, we can use uh, a large uh, variety of toolbox uh, that uh, uh, have been developed in the context of spin glass, uh, frustrated systems, and in general, uh, disordered uh, physics. Okay, so basically the uh, noise uh, of the sensor uh, is uh, mapped into a coupling term, this uh, uh, JIJ, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that can be positive or negative, um, and uh, um, basically depends on the, uh, is connect, directly connected to the spectral function of noise of the sensor. Uh, on, the, on, on the other hand, the uh, interaction of the sensor to the target tasting field can be mapped into uh, an interaction uh, of, the, uh, of the spin glass to a, an external bias field, H, here, that tends to uh, align, let's say, uh, the spin. And so we can uh, write uh, the energy of the um, uh, of the, the spin glass model in this way with these two uh, terms. Uh, so the Hamiltonian will uh, will be a, a Hamiltonian with uh, a long range interaction and a peculiar 
uh, dependence uh, on uh, field spin coupling that is logarithmic. Um, okay, then the quantity we, we will optimize, we will minimize will be something a bit different from sensitivity of the sensor, but will be related to that with a, a very simple function, uh, a logarithmic function. So we redefine the, the cost function uh, into the uh, spin glass ground state energy, but uh, I will show you in a uh, in few moments that uh, uh, this optimization indeed brings uh, uh, an optimization also of the sensitivity of the sensor. Um, and uh, the, as I uh, have anticipated uh, uh, at the beginning, the advantage is that uh, being uh, a, this typical uh, spin grass problem, we can use uh, the tools of simulate and unleading uh, that are very powerful. Uh, however, uh, the simulated unleading also strongly uh, depends on the initial uh, gas, the initial uh, the, the starting point of the uh, unleading. So, uh, it, it, um, it, let's say, uh, can be advantages also to uh, identify some analytic uh, solution. Okay. Here, the analytic solution. So the, the idea is, uh, uh, of course, the, the problem itself cannot be analytically solved, but we can uh, trade the, the, the spatially discretized within model into some, uh, something very uh, similar and analytically solvable. That is a continuous spin model with a spherical constraint represented here. And this kind of uh, tool is often, um, uh, let's say, used as a, a mean field approximation in spin class uh, to describe uh, the dynamics. Um, and, also, and also in this case, uh, this bit of uh, the peculiar logarithmic dependence on the uh, external field, we, uh, we find that uh, this work. So uh, the, the, the spherical model has the same uh, uh, cost function as uh, I have uh, shown you before. Uh, and the, the solution uh, is, uh, is, uh, general, in, is in general actually not uh, is the, a point of the hypercube, but it can be easily projected in a point of the hypercube. For example, here uh, on the bottom, you see that the analytical solution in blue is uh, that is a, a continuous function uh, can be mapped uh, projected in, in, uh, in on the hypercube so in a, in a ensemble of uh, minus and plus one uh, by simply taking uh, the sine function of the uh, analytic solution uh, so then we can take this uh, analytic solution as an initial starting point for the simulating and leading algorithm. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, at this point, the simulating and leading uh, works uh, very well and very fast. Uh, we uh, move only the domain, domain wells and uh, uh, the, the domain uh, walls, sorry. So basically, uh, we do not uh, change the number of, uh, of uh, spin flip of the easy model. So we do not change, coming back to our uh, sensing problem, we do not change um, the number of, uh, spin, uh, of uh, spin flip of pi pulses, basically. And then uh, the uh, simulating annealing uh, finds a fast conversion, convergence. Well, this, uh, um, we applied this method to our uh, spin qubit sensor, nitrogen vacancy spin qubit sensor. Uh, it, here is amplified for a trichromatic field in the, uh, in the presence of our noise. So uh, here is uh, the spectrum uh, in, in gray, the spectrum of uh, uh, the target signal, and in black, the um, um, noise uh, spectral function, 
that is uh, basically what I described before. Um, and we see here on the bottom, we see the uh, coherence of the um, uh, spin sensor in time in the presence of uh, the field, target field and the noise. We see that uh, on the left and on the right, we see some peaks, some collapses due to uh, uh, the, the, um, a couple of components of our uh, target field. Uh, here in, in red is the higher frequency component uh, causes a collapse on the left, while uh, the lower frequency component uh, causes the collapse on the right, while the, uh, the, the central frequency component uh, is superimposed to some uh, harmonics of the noise, so that uh, it cannot be, uh, let's say the, the central collapse is, uh, um, is a eff mixed effect of uh, um, uh, the noise and the uh, target field, they cannot be uh, distinguished. Okay, so we applied our uh, optimization algorithm and we find uh, the, uh, uh, the, the solution here in blue. That uh, we, we, have, we, can, we have a couple of minutes left. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we we uh, we can compare the simulated annealing with the CP uh, sequence, and we see that the uh, solution of simulated annealing is uh, uh, non-trivial, and uh, but uh, remarkably it show it is uh, orthogonal to the noise while uh, shows uh, components uh, in, uh, that covers all the spectral contents of the uh, signal. Uh, okay, here a comparison of, uh, uh, I will skip this, uh, that is the comparison of uh, uh, simulated and alleling uh, based on a vanilla, uh, let's say, algorithm and uh, the simulated and alleling guided by the, uh, the spherical model, that is, of course, better. And uh, uh, here uh, I will just show you the, re the experimental results where you, you can see that uh, indeed uh, the experiment uh, confirms uh, uh, that the uh, simulated and linear solution is better than uh, uh, standard algorithm. So the mapping, uh, the, uh, this validates the fact that the, uh, the, this mapping is um, uh, let's say, um, leads to a, an improvement for the sensor. And also we find that, uh, we find also uh, an upper bound of the, uh, of, um, let's say the, the spherical solution uh, provide us an upper bound for the uh, sensitivity. Well, this brings me to the conclusions. Uh, we have uh, um, basically uh, adapted the quantum optimal control uh, tools uh, to optimize the MD sensor performance. Um, and uh, we have uh, um, find, found a fast algorithm based on the mapping of the dynamical driven uh, one qubit sensor onto uh, an easing screen chain, and also extracting a lower bound to sensor sensitivity. To uh, these uh, kind of methods that can be uh, adapted also to other um, platforms, uh, spin uh, uh, qubit uh, sensor platforms. And uh, uh, what we want now to do is extend, if, uh, extend uh, uh, the method to adaptive schemes to, uh, not, to, to address not only sensing, but also spectroscopy. So let me um, acknowledge the contribution of uh, uh, the students that uh, uh, who have uh, worked on this uh, uh, on this uh, um, uh, work: uh, Santiago Hernandez Gomez, Francesco Pongiali, Stefano Garantini, Giovanni Fasolo, Federico Balducci, and the collaboration with Paolo Cappellaro and Antonello Scarpicchio. I thank you very much for your attention and let me uh, see that we have a postdoc and a PhD uh, open position in the group. Thank you again. Yes, thank you very much for this excellent talk on this quantum sensing, a very interesting results. Um, I, I see that uh, David Bultai has 
has a question, but first I would like to give the um, opportunity to the chat question. It says, can optimal control reach to a resolution for sensing two, approx two proximate nuclear spins individually separated by bond length? Separated by, sorry? Bond length, for example, bond length. Ah, okay, I see on the chat, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the... Um, um, uh, you mean probably uh, uh, to, to proximate nuclear spin individually. Okay, uh, I would say um, yes, uh, this, uh, uh, this can be done. This actually, as, a, as I, I said to you, can be also done, uh, can be also done with uh, um, uh, CP sequences actually because uh, you want to um, measure uh, some uh, uh, very precise frequency. And uh, um, let's say uh, this is something as that if I interpret correctly your, your question, this is what, uh, sorry, I, I'll try to go back in my presentation. This, uh, this is what uh, has been done in the work of uh, Taminiao I was presenting uh, at the beginning of the talk. Maybe I have uh, skipped this. Well. Just a moment. So basically, uh, okay, this is not working so so much, but uh, uh, basically um, there are uh, already works that uh, um, characterize the uh, nuclear spins uh, uh, around the MD centers. Yes, so this is possible. And this is possible uh, if uh, the uh, nuclear spins are very close to the MV center itself. So the cutting is uh, uh, coherent. Instead, if uh, uh, you have uh, uh, nuclear spins that are very far away uh, from the MV center, since I, I, here, here is what I want to show you. Uh, in, in this work, uh, the, the author uh, should uh, identify six uh, different spins around uh, the, the MV centers and that are coupled with different, uh, uh, let's say, coupling strength. So they can be uh, uh, selectively identified uh, in frequency. Yes. Uh, instead, uh, if the nuclear spins are far away from the MV centers, uh, they will, uh, uh, let's say, uh, cannot be uh, identified uh, separately. They will contribute to the, um, uh, let's say, uh, noisy spin bath. Let's say the collective effect of, uh, of spin bath. Next question. Imagine, please unmute yourself and ask your question. You are muted. Can you unmute? Sorry, the, the connection. Can you unmute? And... So, can you hear yes. me? Yes, now it works. Please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, thank you for. Uh... It's cutting for me. I don't know why I cannot hear it again. It cuts your voice. <laughs> um, I cannot hear again. Would you mind typing on the chat? Yeah, thanks. Um, somehow it doesn't work, I guess. So I will read it out loud once we have the question. So, 
classical versus quantum noise, does it differ with respect to optimal control? Okay. Um, okay, so um, in this, this is a, an interesting question. Uh, actually, um, by varying the, uh, external, the strength of the external bias magnetic field, we can drive the uh, nuclear spin bath from, uh, let's say, a quantum uh, to, to a classical regime. And uh, uh, indeed, we have uh, previously uh, characterized also uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, transition. Uh, let me call, uh, call it like this. Um, what uh, we find is that uh, uh, they um, actually we, we can uh, uh, measure uh, the, uh, the, let's say, we can measure the spectrum in both the cases. Uh, it shows different, uh, uh, different behavior. Um, in particular, it shows a, a, a kind of uh, um, discontinuity in the, in, the, in the width of the spectrum. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, because in the, the, let's say, in the classical, uh, in the classical regime is uh, the IE field uh, regime where the uh, coupling with the uh, electron spin of the MV centers uh, of the MV center is weaker, while the quantum uh, regime is uh, that one uh, where the, the, the coupling is uh, stronger. And uh, uh, yeah, actually uh, the, the uh, in both the cases, we, we can characterize the noise and then use it uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, input information of our optimal uh, quantum control algorithm. Uh, actually, what uh, we are interested also in is, uh, um, as I was mentioning, extending uh, the open loop scheme I have shown you to an adaptive uh, scheme uh, that takes into account the experiment uh, and uh, uh, take it as uh, input information for, for the next step. And this could be useful to um, character, let's say, uh, for sensing the purpose if you don't know uh, the uh, nature of, the, uh, of your noise. So you don't know if the noise is classical or quantum. So this is uh, for sure an interesting uh, extension uh, for, for our optimal control uh, algorithm. So thank you, Nicole, once more, and for the next speaker. Thank you very much for your talk. Thanks. Thank you, Yimei.